All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center, and welcome to Beyond Spanish Poetry in Basque, Catalan, Galician, and Spanish. Uh, my name is Quentin Ring, and I am thrilled to welcome you to this program. Uh, we've hosted it annually for several years, barring pandemic here and there. Um, and so we're just really glad to have, uh, to be able to welcome this program back into this space. Um, we'll jump into the program in just a moment, uh, but I did want to uh, begin our evening uh, by acknowledging Beyond Baroque's presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Gabrielina Tongva peoples. We acknowledge the wrong done to these peoples through settler colonialism, genocidal practices, and the violent dispossession of their land. And as an arts organization, Beyond Baroque is committed to uplifting indigenous writers, communities, their stories, and their art. For those of you who don't know Beyond Baroque, uh, we are Los Angeles' oldest literary organization. We have a 55-year history of supporting poets and writers through readings, performances, workshops, art ex exhibitions, performances, and community building uh, right here in this space. Uh, for those of you who are new to the space, this is Venice, uh, Venice's original city hall, built in 1906. Uh, we've been here since 1978, uh, turning it into an art center. Um, and you know we host uh, events pretty much every weekend right here in what used to be the city council chambers. Uh, we've helped launch the careers of poets ranging from Wanda Coleman to Amanda Gorman, artists like Mike Kelly, uh, and even musicians like the band X who met in our workshop and formed the band as a result. Um, we are very much supported by our members. Uh, so if you're interested in becoming a member, it does help us underwrite our programming. Uh, we try to keep most of our programs here free. Um, if you are a member and we do have to charge, you'll still get in free as a member. It's a huge help to everything we do. It's been a lot of work to rebuild from the pandemic. So uh, it starts as little as $60 for an individual membership, $80 is dual membership. There's levels above that. Uh, you can see Genesis in the bookstore about becoming a member or, or, or become one online as well. Um, so we do appreciate your support. Um, we do have some great programs coming up. Um, just tomorrow we have the release of a new poetry, item, uh, new poetry album by Matt Cedillo and Ruben Funkenwadel Guevara. Um, that's gonna be really exciting. Uh, next week we have Francesca Bell's book launch next Friday. We also have a poetry workshop, an intensive workshop coming up with Diana Coy Gwynn. That's gonna be great, I believe that's May 20th. Um, and, and many, 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 many more programs beyond that. So please do check out our websites, follow us on social media, um, and come back for more. Um, Beyond that, I just really want to say a big thank you first to our staff uh, who are working on this program. Um, Yvonne Salinas, Eric Alberg, Genesis Perez, Catherine King, they keep this place running, so very appreciative of all of you. Um, and, and I'm also very grateful to all of the readers uh, who are here tonight. We're really excited to uh, hear you read. Um, this program is very much uh, dear to our hearts. One of our biggest commitments at Beyond Baroque is to linguistic diversity. Um, we're very interested in thinking about uh, language in all of its forms, poetry in different languages, um, thinking about all the meanings, the rhythms, the cadences, the sounds that come um, across nations and across languages. And so this program uh, is very special to us. Um, my biggest thanks, uh, however, does go to our sponsor for this evening, the Education Office of the Constant General of Spain, as well as Tour España, the Tourist Office of Spain. Um, really grateful to you for providing support for this program. Um, and I should also say thank you, give, give a very special thank you to Mariano Zaro. Uh, wow. Yes. Uh, he's the one who's brought this program here since 2017, I believe. Uh, and he is a brilliant bilingual poet himself. Uh, he's a longtime supporter and trustee of Beyond Baroque. Uh, he's also here to say a few more words about the program. So please, everyone, welcome Mario Nazaro and enjoy the program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Quentin. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here uh, today. Um, I prepared a few words, very simple. Um, is uh, this is a um, is a great um, it's a great moment to be here together. We are not in our little boxes via Zoom. We are back in person. So thank you for being here. Um, this is um, beyond Spanish poetry in Basque, Catalan, Galician, and Spanish, and of course all poems 
are also going to be read in English. This is a collaboration between Beyond Baroque and the Office of Education of the Consulate of Spain in Los Angeles. And the event, as uh, Quentin said, is also sponsored by the Office of Tourism. Beyond Spanish started in this very theater in 2017. The objective was, and still is, to celebrate poetry written in the languages spoken, some of the languages spoken in Spain. As we say at Beyond Baroque, we are here to explore the possibilities of language. There is a small change in the program. We're going to start with poems in Galician instead of poems in Spanish. Ines Garcia Sal will read in Galician. Ines is an education advisor at the Office of Education of Spanish Consulate in Los Angeles. And then Jennifer Holmes, who is a poet and a professor of theater at Whittier College, will read the English version of these poems. Uh, Jennifer has been uh, part of uh, Beyond Spanish since the very beginning. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the, next, the next reader is Monica Comas. Uh, she's also an advisor at the Office of Education, and she will read the poems in Catalan. Uh, <laughs> um, and Jennifer will read uh, the English version of the poems. Then uh, Lourdes Orueta Mendia will read in Basque. Lourdes is the attaché of education at the Spanish consulate. And uh, Alicia Vogel Sainz will read the English version of these poems. Um, Alicia is a poet um, and is also the coordinator of family programs at LACMA, the Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art. Our last reader is Mimi Lazo, a Venezuelan actress, um, internationally known, uh, living in Los Angeles. And she is the granddaughter of a very famous Venezuelan poet. We have to talk about his work. And uh, after uh, Mimi, Alicia will read the English version of the poem. Uh, Mimi is going to read one Spanish poem. Um, thank you, Quentin, uh, <clears throat> Jimmy, everybody here, Ivan at Beyond Baroque. Thank you to all participants and sponsors. Um, and uh, there's going to be a small reception after the reading. You are all. Uh, welcome. Let's celebrate uh, the power of poetry. And I would like to invite Lourdes for a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mariano. Well, I just want to say that the Spanish Office of Education of the Embassy is very honored to be here collaborating with Beyond. Uh, Baroque and with the with uh, Tour España, and uh, I also want to thank all of you to be here because you are here, and especially I want to thank Mar uh, Marie Cruz, who is the president of Casa de España in Whittier. <laughs> uh, now, please, uh, Javier. Rodríguez Mañas, please, can you come and say some words? He's the yeah. Consular of Tourism. Yeah. <clears throat> Gabón, buenas tardes, buena tarde. Buenas tardes, good evening. Uh, the official languages in my country show us that we have a land plenty of diversity. The tradition, the culture, the convivence is essential. And of course, we are waiting for you there to test, to live, to sense the convivence that we have. It's absolutely, absolutely fantastic, amazing. Uh, when you can see an all, 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 all society, an all, 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 all culture as the Spanish culture, hmm, combining yeah, and going along with all our diversity. 
Please come to Spain. We are waiting for you. Muchas gracias. Nos veremos en nuestro país. Hello, good evening. I'm going to read poems in Gallego, which is my mother tongue. I come from the northwestern part of Spain, Galicia, north of Portugal. And if you have the program, you'll see that the first poem that I'm going to read is by Federico García Lorca. And you're probably thinking, Lorca? Wasn't he from the south? Yes, he was. But he fell in love with the Galician language. And in one of these funny things that happen sometimes with poets, he wrote six poems in Galician. This is not very well known. That's what I thought. I bring this poem to you. So Lorca in Gallego. And this first poem is, a, is one he dedicated to Rosalia de Castro, who is also a poet, a Galician poet, and he really uh, liked his, her work. So here goes. Canzón de cuna para Rosalia de Castro, morta. Erguete, miña amiga, que ya cantan os galos do día. Erguete, miña amada, porque o vento muxe como unha vaca. Os arados van e ven, dende Santiago a Belén, dende Belén a Santiago, un ancho ven en un barco, un barco de prata fina que trae ador de Galicia, Galicia deitada e queda, transida de tristes herbas, herbas que cobren teu leito e a negra fonte dos teus cabelos, cabelos que van ao mar, onde as nubes teñen se un idio pombal. Érguete, miña amiga, que xa cantan os galos do día, Erguete, miña amada, porque o vento muxe como unha vaca. Ok. So that was Federico. And this, uh, this second poem is by probably the, the best known poet. In... Oh, you do, you do this, the, the English now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> was... Well, then it's a little bit easier for them to remember. Okay. Okay. You can. okay. Rise, dear friend, as the morning rooster crows. Rise, dear love, as the ruminant wind lows. The plow goes up and back from Santiago to Bethlehem. From Bethlehem to Santiago, an angel comes sailing. A boat of finest silver laden with Galicia's morning. Galicia, supine, still, wrapped in sorrow's vines. Vines that twist round your bed and your black fountain hair, your hair that yearns toward the sea where clouds nest like doves. Rise, dear friend, as the morning rooster crows. Rise, dear love, as the ruminant wind lows. That sounded really good in English, didn't it? <laughs> okay, well, the second, poet, the second poem now is, is by Rosalia de Castro. She's probably the best known poet that we have from Galicia. And she wrote at the end of, of, of the, in 1863, this particular poem. And this was a revival of the Galician culture and language, and she was the main representative. And Galicia is a poor region of Spain, and at that time, incredibly poor. And that led to a huge wave of immigration. You probably, if you're from Latin America, you know that we call Gallegos. Most of the immigrants came from Galicia, you know? So this poem is, is, very, is very close to our hearts because um, it's about a man who leaves the country in search of a better future, like so many today. And he says goodbye to everything he knows, to his world. So this has become the anthem for all of us who are away from Galicia. So it's a sentimental poem, but one that has been put to music, etc. So here it goes. Adios ríos, adios fontes. Adios ríos, adios fontes, adios regatos pequenos, adios vista dos meus hoyos, non sei cando nos veremos. Miña terra, miña terra, terra donde eu me criei, hortiña que quero tanto, figueiriñas que prantei, prados, ríos, arboredas, pinares que move o vento, 
Paxariños piadores, casiña do meu contento, muiño dos castañares, noites claras da luar, campaniñas timbradoras da igresiña do lugar, amoriñas das silveiras que eu lle daba o meu amor, camininhos entre humillo, adiós para sempre, adiós. Adiós, gloria, adiós, contento, deixo a casa onde nacín, deixo a aldea que conozo por un mundo que non vin, deixo amigos por estraños, deixo a veiga polo mar, deixo, en fin, canto ben quero, quen poidera non deixar. Mas son pobre e mal pecado, a miña terra ne miña, que as trayedan de prestada a veira porque camiña o que naceu desdichado. Adiós, adiós que me vou, erviñas do campo santo, donde meu pai se enterrou, Erviñas que viquei tanto, terriña que nos criou. Adiós, virxe da asunción, branca como un serafín, levo vos no corazón, pedidelle adiós por min, miña virxe da asunción. Xa soen lonxe, moi lonxe as campanas do pomar. Para min, ai, coitadiño, nunca máis han de tocar. Xa soen lonxe, máis lonxe, cada balada é un dolor. Vou me soio, sin arrimo, Miña terra, adiós, adiós. Adiós tamén, queridiña, adiós por sempre, quizáis. Digo cheste adiós chorando desde a beiriña do mar. Non me olvides, queridiña, si morro de soidás, tantas leguas mar adentro, miña casiña, meu lar. Goodbye, rivers. Goodbye, fountains. Goodbye, little rills. Goodbye, view of my eyes. I do not know when we'll see each other. My land, my land, land where I was raised, small orchard that I loved so, dear fig trees that I planted, meadows, streams, groves, stands of pine swayed by the wind, little chirping birds, darling cottage of my joy, Mill in the chestnut forest, clear nights of brilliant moonlight, cherished ringing bells of the tiny parish church, blackberries in the brambles that I used to give my love, narrow footpaths through the cornfields, goodbye, forever goodbye, goodbye heaven, goodbye happiness. I leave the house of my birth, I leave the hamlet that I know for a world I haven't seen. I leave friends for strangers. I leave the lowland for the sea. I leave, in short, well, what I love. Would I didn't have to go. But I am poor and base sin. My land is not my own. For even the road's shoulder is loaned out to the wayfarer who was born star-crossed. Goodbye, goodbye, I am leaving hallowed blades of the churchyard where my father lies buried, saintly blades I kissed so much, dear land that brought us up. Goodbye, Verxe de Asuncion, white as a seraph, I take you along in the heart. Plead with God on my behalf, Verxe de Asuncion of mine. Far, very far away, are heard the church bells of Pomar, for hapless me, alas, they shall never ring again. They are heard afar, farther away, every peal deals out pain. I part alone without a friend. Goodbye, land of mine, goodbye. Farewell to you too, little darling. Farewell forever, perhaps. I send you this farewell crying from the precious seaside. Don't forget me, little darling. If I should die of loneliness, so many leagues out to the sea, my dear house, my home. Just a short one. The last one. And this one is slightly different, not so, not so sad. 
is, is by a contemporary writer, Luisa Castro, is, uh, and this is a little bit different, and he plays with uh, fish, because the other thing that we have in Galicia is fish. Okay, so it's called Non hay descanso. Non hay descanso. Que non haya descanso. Que todas las merluzas se xunten para afogarme. Que todos los marrachos me tendan a su trampa. Que me apresen las lanchas. Que me leen o palangre. Que os peixes sapos me devoren os dedos. Que me atravese o espada. Que todos los golpes de mar veñan por mí. O me amago so coa botella e os teus hoyos de enfadada. There's no rest, let there be no rest. Let all the hake come together to drown me. Let all the sharks set their trap for me. Let the megrim capture me and tangle me in the long line. Let the frogfish eat all my fingers. May the swordfish pierce me. Let all the breaking waves come for me or I'll drown alone with a bottle in your angry eyes. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm going to read in Catalan. I'm going to read three poems written by three uh, powerful and contemporary women poets. The first one is by Blanca Yumbidal, and the title of the poem is Tan bonic y tan negra. Tan bonic y tan negra. No li clavis les dents. No li regalis la pau. No li cantis la, que, la pena que tens, ni a la cara, ni en lloc. No li diguis finestres, no li diguis t'espero, no li diguis l'infern ni exactament el contrari. No li diguis que penses que perquè no et deia res pensaves que sí, que es van invertir un precipici, que es van engaviar molts ocells i que un règim va caure. No li piquis la porta, no li doblis cervells, no li apaguis el foc, no li facis un nus. No li preguntis si la por li ha marxat o si la por se li escampa. No li vegis misteri. No li assenyalis cavalls ni un futur galopant. No li mesuris el mal. No li ensenyis quan pesa el que dius i el que no. No li donis verins. No li donis ferides. No li rimis dos verbs. No li vinguis amb flors que s'esclafen per viure. No li esquerdis l'esquerda. No li ballis fiblons. No li parlis del món que tremola si el veu. No li parlis de tant. No li parlis d'un cel ple de vols i de bales, ni del cel tan bonic de tan negre. No li exageris la set. No li recordis que plou ni si la pluja és petita, ni si la petita és la mort. Escriu-li només. I fes-ho distret, descarat, descarnat i directe. Que l'amor prefixat ni t'agrada ni no, però que sempre t'ha fet una mica de mandra. So pretty, so black. Do not bite him. Do not give him any peace. Do not serenade him with your woes, neither to his face nor anywhere. Do not speak of windows. Do not speak of waiting for him. Do not speak of hellscapes, nor the exact opposite thereof. Do not speak of your thinking of why he didn't say anything when you thought he would, or that a precipice had inverted or that many birds had been caged and a regime had fallen in between. Do not knock on his door. Do not overthink him. Do not put out his fires. Do not tie his knots for him. Do not ask him if his fear has gone away or has spread further than ever. Do not see mystery in him. Do not show him horses or galloping futures. Do not measure his wickedness. 
Do not show him the weight of your silence and your speech. Do not give him poison. Do not give him wounds to lick. Do not rhyme his verbs for him. Do not come knocking with flowers that are pressed so as to live on. Do not shatter his shards. Do not spin his spurs. Do not speak of the world that shakes when he sees it. Do not speak so much. Do not speak of a sky filled with flights and bullets, nor of such a pretty sky, such a black sky. Do not overplay your thirst. Do not remind him it is raining, nor if the rain is little, nor if the little one is death. Just write to him, and discreetly so, cheekily so, brutally and directly, and say that you neither like nor dislike love with a prefix. But it has always seemed a bit too much of a hassle. The next one is by Gemma Gorga, and it's entitled Baptisma. Baptisma. Cada vespre torno a llegir totes les cartes que mai no m'has escrit i que guardo en calaixos transparents perquè els lladres no puguin trobar-les. Com veure l'aire en l'aire, la llum en la llum? Existeixen molts passats dins el passat, moltes memòries que es ramifiquen com petits capilars del temps. També es record tot allò que no vam arribar a viure, a veure, a dir-nos, tot allò que se'ns va, adherir, que, que se'ns va quedar adherit lleument al cor, com una pestanya a punt de volar. Mortes abans de néixer, no per això deixen de ser ànimes les ànimes, ni les paraules paraules. Només els va faltar l'aigua freda del baptisme i algú que sabés creure en elles. Baptism. Each evening I read again all the letters you've never written me and that I keep in transparent boxes so thieves won't ever be able to find them. For how will they see air in air, light in light? There are many pasts existing in the past, many memories that ramify like small capillaries of time. Also, memory is everything we never managed to live, to see, to tell ourselves, everything that remained lightly adhering in our hearts, like an eyelash about to fly. Dead before their birth, but all the same, souls do not stop being souls. All they need is the cold water of baptism and someone who knows how to believe in them. And the last one is by Sonia Moll, and it's called Invisibilitats. Invisibilitats. Si la beso, el desig torna a créixer, com les extremitats d'una estrella de mar, i m'oblido que morirem qualsevol dia, i que llavors tant se valdrà que hàgim existit. El que escrius potser et fa terna, però el que vius t'ho emportes dins d'un sac però on treuen el cap fades i monstres i no se n'assabentarà mai ningú. Morirem i potser ens ploraran els gossos, que no sabran que hem fet l'amor tantes vegades, d'amagat i del revés, i sense seny, i sense casa. El que no dius sí que existeix. T'existeix en dins, com una pedra negra que tu mateixa t'has nuat el turmell. Invisibilities. If I kiss her, 
Desire grows back again, like the arms of a starfish, and I forget that we will die someday, so that then it will be as though we never existed. What you write will maybe make you immortal, but what you live you carry off in a sack, out of which imps and monsters stick their head, and no one will ever know. We will die, and maybe the dogs will mourn us, who won't know that we have made love so many times in secret, and the wrong way round, and with no sense, and with no home. What you don't say certainly exists. It exists within you, like a black stone that you yourself have tied to your ankle. Well, I am going to read in Basque. Basque is the only official Spanish language that does not come from Romani, from Italian. For, oh, from Roman, excuse me. Ah, <laughs> excuse me. And um, well, so it's not a Romanic language. Uh, so this is why it may sound a little bit different. I am going to read three poems by, written by Kirmen Uribe, who is, the, who is the National Prize of Literature. And uh, well, the first poem uh, was uh, published uh, in Basque and in English uh, by the New Yorker. Yeah, so, well, it, uh, it tells, um, the feeling he had when he was a child, yes, and how that feeling remains even nowadays. It is called Emakumeak Fabrikatik Bueltan. Conserva fabrikan egin zuen lan amamak, eta amak, eta izebek, langileak ziren, ez etxeko andreak. Edo hori ere bai, gustoko nuen laneki, lanetik etortzen zirenean zekarren usain ura. Arrain y ser dieta gatsun usaña. Naiseta verayek gorrotatzen zuten, garbitzeko eta asteko horren saya senura. Fabrican la neguin la neguita en suten etseco emacumeek. Eta ostean echean. Anchoak garbitzen zitusten su caldeco mayan. Ni aspian jolasten nintzen bitartean. Sorteko banintzen probatzeko emango zidaten. Ogitartekoak ere antxoekin ziren. Nik nahiago nuen hori txerria edo txokolatea baino, baina lagunek barre egiten zidaten arren. Beste garai batzuk ziren. Orduan emakumeek abestu egiten zuten fabriketan. Eta ugazabek baimena ematen zieten aurrari bularra eman behar bazioten. Elkarrekin hartzen zuten atzeden emakumeek. Laneko arropekin arrizko hormaren kontra eta eguzkia hartzen edo erretzen. Begiak itzita. Bakeune bat bizitzen zuten horrela eta azten ziren lanaz, senarrez eta seme alabez. Egun, urte andana geroago, nik ere begiak isten ditut. Beraien bake une ura aurkitu nahian. Ahoa zabaltzen dut, esperoan edo, esku batek opari egin diezadan antxoa xera bat. Zukaldeko mai gainetik zetorren oparia, ni azpian jolasten nitzen bitartean, bakarrik. Beraiek lan egin behar zuten eta. Back from the cannery. Our grandmother worked at the cannery and our mothers and aunt. They were workers, not housewives. Or were they that too? I liked the smell they brought home when they came in from work that smell of fish 
perspiration, and brine, though they all hated it. The smell that's so hard to wash off and forget. The woman at our the women at our house worked in the cannery and afterward at home. They cleaned anchovies at the kitchen table while I played around underneath it. If I was lucky, they'd give me a taste. Even sandwiches were anchovy ones or tuna fish. I preferred that to sausage or chocolate. Even though my friends laughed at me, those were different times back when the women sang in the canneries and their bosses gave them leave if they had to breastfeed the baby. The women took their breaks together in their work clothes, leaning against the stone wall, taking the sun or smoking, eyes closed. They had a peaceful moment that way and forgot about work, husbands, and children. Today, quite a few years later, I close my eyes too, wanting to find that peaceful moment of theirs. I open my mouth, expect, expectantly maybe, for a woman's hand to give me the gift of an anchovy fillet. The gift arrived over the kitchen table while I was playing underneath it alone because they had to work. Well, this second poem is called uh, Udako Gau Epela. And um, well, Kate Blanchett, when this is what she said in o last November, that uh, well, she read that, po that poem, she knew about that poem. And when she read it, she was so impressed that she used that impression she had uh, for her last film, for her last film uh, called Tar, yes? So, well, here it goes. Udako gau epela. Udako gau epela. Musika tabernatik. Neure barrua ies egin nahi dut. Droga onbera sentitzen dut, zainetan barrena. Badoa, badoa, sugeak ezagutzen bai ditu obekien nire bazter ilunenan. Barrutik bezarkatzen nauen gauza bakarra da. Lasain nago azkenean. Warm summer night. Warm summer night, music from a bar. I went to run away inside myself. I feel a good drug through my veins, meandering, for the snake knows my darkest corners best. It's the only thing that hugs me inside. I'm calm at last. Well, and uh, the last poem is, is a conversation. So, well, my friend Miren is going to help me with that poem. It is a WhatsApp conversation. Merezi zuen? Merezi zuen, sir. Bizitzea? Jakina. Liburu engatik? Ez. Zer gatik ba? Zer mea lebaren gatik, batez ere. Eta liburuak? Liburuak zer? Ez dute merezi? Irakutzea ederra izan da. Eta idaztea? Ez hain beste. Pridiatziko nituzke denak. Denak? Den denak? Poema aure bai? Bai, zu ere bai. Ara! You know, I wish I had two voices, but I'm just, you're going to have to imagine two voices. <laughs> I love it, though. Um, WhatsApp. Was it worth it? Was it worth what? Living. Sure. For the books? No. Why then? Especially for the kids. And the books? The books what? Don't they deserve it? 
It was great to read. What about writing? Not so great. <laughs> I'd rewrite them all. All of them? All of them. This poem too? Yeah, and you too. Wow. <laughs> Buenas noches. Para mí es muy importante esta noche porque este, recito poesía desde niñita. Mi abuela era catalana, pero ella decía que era andaluza. Y siempre hablaba de los andaluces. Y amo la poesía desde niña. Quiero darle las gracias a la Oficina de Educación de la Embajada de España por esta invitación para mí tan importante. Espero que no sea la última. Así que empiezo con la profecía. Me lo contaron ayer las lenguas de doble filo, que te casaste hace un mes, me quedé tan tranquilo, que otra cualquiera en mi caso se hubiera echado a llorar yo cruzándome de brazos, dije que me daba igual, que nada de pegarme un tiro ni enredarme en maldiciones, ni apedrar con suspiro los vidrios de tus balcones. Que te has casado. Buena suerte. Vive cien años contenta. Y en la hora de tu muerte Dios no te lo tenga en cuenta. Que si al pie de tus altares mi nombre se te borró por la gloria de mi madre, que no te guardo rencor. Porque sin ser tu marido, ni tu novio, ni tu amante, yo soy el que más te ha querido. Con eso tengo bastante. Y haciendo un poco de historia, nos volveremos atrás para recordar entonces nuestros días de chaval. ¿Qué tiene el niño, Malena? Anda como trastornado. Te encuentro cara de pena y el colorcillo quebrado. Y ya no juega la tropa ni tira piedras al río, ni se destroza la ropa subiéndose a coger nidos. ¿No te parece a ti extraño? No es una cosa muy rara que un chaval de 12 años lleve tan triste la cara. Mira que soy perro viejo y estás demasiado tranquila. ¿Quieres que te dé un consejo? Vigila, mujer, vigila. Y fueron dos centinelas los ojitos de mi madre. Cuando sale de la escuela se va para los olivares. ¿Y qué busca allí? Una niña. Tendrá el mismo tiempo que él. ¡Ay, José Miguel, no le riña! Que está empezando a querer. Mi padre encendió un pitillo y se enteró bien de tu nombre y te regaló unos arcillos y a mí un pantalón de hombre. Yo no te dije, te adoro, pero amarré en tu balcón dos cintas color de oro de mi primera comunión. Y tú fina y orgullosa me ofreciste en recompensa dos cintas color de oro que engalanaban tus trenzas. Voy a misa con mis primos. Ay, bueno, te veré en la ermita. Qué serio nos pusimos al darnos el agua bendita. Mas luego en el campanario, cuando rompimos a hablar, dice mi tía Rosario que la cigüeña es sagrada y, la, y el colorín y la fuente y las flores y el rocío y aquel torito valiente que está bebiendo en el río. Y el bronce de esta campana y el romero de los montes. Y aquella raya lejana que le llaman horizonte. Todo es sagrado. Tierra y cielo. Porque todo lo hizo Dios. ¿Qué te gusta más? ¿Tu pelo? Qué bonito te salió. Pues si tu boca y tus brazos y tus manos redonditas y tus pies fingiendo el paso de las palomas suritas, con la blancura de un copo de nieve te comparé. Te revestí de piropos de la cabeza a los pies. A la vuelta de, de la esquina te hice un ramo de pintimini precioso y luego nos retratamos en, la, en el agüita del pozo. Y hablando de estas pamplinas que inventan las criaturas, llegamos hasta la esquina, cogidos de la cintura. Y yo te pregunté, ¿en qué piensas? Tú dijiste, 
en darte un beso. Y yo sentí una vergüenza que me caló hasta los huesos. De noche muertos de luna nos vimos en la ventana. Shh, mi hermanito está en la cuna. Le están cantando la nana. Ay, ay, es mi nana, nanita, nanita ea, que se duerme mi niño por la vereda. La otra tarde yo cantaba mientras mi niña dormía. La otra tarde yo cantaba mientras mi niña dormía. Y los almendros lloraban y los almendros lloraban de la infinita alegría. Y los almendros lloraban y los almendros lloraban de la infinita Finita alegría, jugaban al escondite la luna y el limonero, jugaban al escondite la luna y el limonero, y los almendros lloraban y los almendros lloraban por ver dormir a un lucero. Y los almendros lloraban y los almendros lloraban por ver Dormía un lucero. Y mientras que tú cantabas, yo inocente me pensé que la nana nos casaba como marido y mujer. Pamplinas, figuraciones que se inventan los chavales. Después la vida se impone: ¿cuánto tienes? ¿Cuánto vales? Por eso yo al enterarme que llevas un mes casado, no dije que iba a matarme, sino que me daba igual. Mas como es rico tu dueño, te vendo esta profecía. Tú cada noche entre sueños soñarás que me querías. Y recordarás la tarde en que tu boca me besó. Y te llamarás cobarde como te lo llamo yo. Y verás sueña que sueña que me morí siendo un chico. Y se llevó una cigüeña mi corazón en el pico. Pensarás, no es cierto nada. Yo sé que lo estoy soñando. Pero allá en la madrugada te despertarás llorando por el que no es tu marido, ni tu novio, ni tu amante. Yo soy el que más te ha querido. Con eso tengo bastante. ¡Bravo! No van a entender nada de lo que va a decir ella porque yo no sé si lo dije bien. Así que bueno, esta es la poesía verdadera la que va a decir ella. A mí no me dijeron que había que cantar. Eso es todo lo They didn't tell me that I needed to sing. That's all I was That was so beautiful. No, me, me, me digo, pensé de mi mamá, que es ecuatoriana, y de todo, bueno. No, muy lindo. Prophecy. They told me yesterday, in spiteful tongues, that you married last month. The news left me cold. 
A lesser man might have burst into tears. I merely folded my arms and said, it's all the same to me. I won't put a gun to my head or waste my breath with cursing or throw stones at your window and sigh. So you're married, God bless. Be happy and live to a hundred. And when death calls at your door, may God let it slip from his mind. When you stood at the altar, your name was erased from your mind. For my mother's sake, I bear you no grudge, not your husband, nor your boyfriend, nor your lover. Yet I was the one who loved you the most. The, what, that's more than enough for me. What's up with the child, Malena? He's crying so much. I see his sad face and his skin turning pale. He doesn't play with the gang or throw stones in the river. No rips in his clothes, climbing trees to find nests. Doesn't it worry you? Isn't it strange for a 12-year-old boy to be down in the dumps? I know you too well. You keep too brave a face. Do you know my advice? Watch out, girl, watch out. There were two eager spies in my mother's keen eyes. When he runs out of school, he goes down to the woods. In search of what? A young lass, the same age as himself. Michael and Joseph don't scold him. He's starting to learn how to love. My father lit a cigarette and got to know you quite well. He bought you some earrings, new trousers for me. I didn't cry out, I adore you but tied on your balcony railings the golden slick silk ribbon of my first communion. And you, so fine and so proud, paid me back with the gift of the two pink ribbons that tied back your hair. I'm off to the mass with, the mass with my cousins. I'll see you down at the chapel. How devoutly we stood to be blessed by the holy water. Then in the church tower we started to talk my auntie Rosario says that the stork is a sacred bird and the ribbons, the fountain, the flowers, the morning dew and the brave little bull drinking down by the river and the bronze of the bell and the rosemary on the hillside, that faraway line they call the horizon. Everything sacred, the earth and the sky are all, are all God's creation. What will you like the best? Your beautiful hair. He made it so beautiful, and your mouth, and your arms, and the curve of your hands, and your feet pretending to walk like the pattering of turtle doves. I shall compare you to the whiteness of a snowflake, shower you with praise from head to toe. Walking back, I picked flowers and made you a beautiful bouquet. We had our portraits taken in the water of the well, and more such nonsense we said to each other until we reach, reached home, arm in arm interlaced, and I asked, what are you thinking? And you said, of kissing you. And I felt a shame that pierced to the bone. At night, dead of the moon, we saw each other, we saw each other at the window, my baby brother's in the cradle. I'm singing a lullaby. Get out of my sight, you mad thing. My father won't love you, and neither do I. And while you sang, I, innocent, thought to myself that the moon was making us husband and wife, fairy tales and dreams, such stuff as kids make up. Then life takes over. You are what you possess. That's why I, when I heard you've been married a month, I put no gun to my head and said, it's all the same to me. But now your owner is rich. I give you this toast. Every night when you sleep, you will dream how you loved me. You will always rel relive that night that your mouth kissed mine and you'll call yourself a coward as I call you now. In your dreams, in your dreams, you will see how I died still an innocent boy and a stork stole away my heart in its beak. You may think that's not true, 
This is not but a dream. But at dawn, when you wake, wet with tears, you will sigh for the one, not your husband, nor, nor boyfriend, nor lover. Yet I was the one who loved you the most. That's more than enough for me. Oh. There you go. Um, I've been told to let you know there's a reception and nice food. So hay una recepción donde pueden hay un poco de vinito y algo de comer. Y um, algo más. Es poner a prueba mi caballerosidad. Sí, verdad. No, es increíble. Canta y también ayuda. Gracias. We want to thank uh, Mimi. We want to thank Jennifer and Alicia. Please, yes, come here. Oh, this is just a little present. Oh, thank you. And remember us. Yes. Oh. We have all the readers here, please, and everybody participating. Yes. This is. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you everybody for to see you next year and uh, let's go to the party and have some some wine. Thank you very much.